Hi, and welcome everyone to uh, this webinar around building modern platforms using Microsoft Azure. So in general, um, I will guide you through um, what happens currently, what the state is uh, in the world around us and with these modern platforms before diving into some use cases and the reference cases and a little bit how you could leverage the capabilities of Microsoft Azure building a solution. So as I said, the world is changing, so we're more moving to a digital world. Um, you know, you're doing your business online, your applications are online, and you deal with data online, as you can see here. So you either deal with a modern workplace, business application, or you leverage data in AI. And this could mean that you're either, these are kind of things you find in, in the force or Garner type of reports with regards to digital transformation. You can either empower your employees by providing them a digital uh, platform like an Office 365. Um, when you're transforming your business more to an online world, you also will probably engage customers more online and provide them better support and experience, for instance, leveraging chatbots. You could start optimizing your processes or streamlining more your processes, use leveraging what you can find in the cloud, and you can even provide or transform your products or services having them in the cloud. So basically, the digital age transforms you know, all your technologies in, into a more online platform, whether that be um, the cloud, or IoT, or Edge, or AI, so kind of these enhancing each other and kind of providing the ways of innovation. So cloud currently is global available, so Azure has been available since um, 2010, and even some of the other cloud providers before that. Um, and this kind of pushed the IoT, something we're now dealing with, um, har harnessing the data you get from sensors and devices and get some data out of it using big data. You can even offload now, so this is kind of the next step now. You'd see that some of the intelligence is offloaded to, um, from the cloud into IoT devices and then just only push that what you're interested in in your cloud platform. Um, leveraging, in the end, uh, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning capabilities. So this is kind of what we're kind of, what we're seeing now is in, in an invasion space. And this is where a modern platform could help. So if you look at modern platforms, there are, of course, the three big ones, the ones you probably have heard of, um, AWS, Azure, and the Google Cloud Platform. They basically kind of are the known big three and kind of controlling the market and are investing heavily uh, in their platforms in various ways. For instance, another one you could think of maybe less known, but also trying to enter the cloud markets, IBM, with their Watson offering, whether it be machine learning or in the IoT domain. So if you look at Microsoft Azure, they kind of stand out in a ways that they have about 50 regions worldwide, as you can see in this overview, of data centers around the world, even some with um, availability zones, providing more availability um, within a region. And by availability zone, I mean that there are multiple data centers within a region. So that's kind of what they're offering, and they're available in over 140 countries worldwide. And what do you think, okay, what does each data center kind of offering? So this is, these are kind of the capabilities each of these data centers or multiple of them are offering. It's that you, know, you can find services around compute, storage databases, uh, identity developer services, et cetera. Some of the services are still um, maturing enough and are less available. And by less available, I mean that they're not available at every uh, data center. Um, some of them are. For instance, storage, storage for instance, uh, is available in any data center. So just to give you a little bit of a um, sense that most of these services are available, but not every service is available in every region. Okay. So what are the benefits of what do you see um, with cloud? So this is more generic. You could kind of say that you're going to say goodbye to some of your traditional challenges. So these could relate to security. So, you know, each of the cloud providers and Microsoft Azure as well are tightening their security to their procedures and building better security protocols into their offering to cover kind of for attack and data leakage, even with the current GDPR that's upcoming. That's very important. The other thing is cost. So cost, you have to see that the fact is that you're moving your infrastructure to the cloud, meaning that because you're outsourcing it, that you're more paid for what you use. So it's, it starts to become more kind of a commodity. And instead of capital expenditure, you're going more to operational expenditure. Then something like um, compliance. 
So cloud providing, of, uh, cloud providers, of course, need to be compliant and have to achieve this also to serve you as a customer. So especially regulatory agencies will, will look into it and will provide um, new guidelines, even something around the GDPR. But a cloud provider can do this at a much faster pace than you even might have to do, and okay, even provide services that are compliant. So you kind of put the burden, instead of your own organization, you put the burden at the cloud provider, and they have to be compliant, and of course their services will be. And another challenge would be uh, data. So you always store data secured, and you want to have it retrieved, or even if you have user mounts. But with the growth um, with IoT and big data, you kind of need to dimension out your um, capability for storage. But for this, you could use the elasticity that the cloud offers. So you can also offload it to them. And the other thing is, oh, um, with cloud, you might think, oh, hey, new technology, I need more resources. But this doesn't necessarily be the case, because a lot of the uh, burden and challenges are kind of put towards the cloud, and you might need just the same amount of people, maybe a little bit less instead of more. And if you look at the cloud, there are certain things that you could do better with regards to the cloud. So one of the things would be DevOps. So there will be more collaboration because you're using kind of the same platform between um, development engineers and operations. And kind of what um, most of the cloud providers provide is online um, uh, support for uh, continuous integration, deployment, etc. And of course, the servers are a little bit abstracted away, so you're focusing more on the dev than on the ops side. So this could dramatically improve for you. With regards to that, there's also something like service technology. They're still service, but you won't see them. It's kind of abstracted away for you. So you as an organization will start to think more about um, the business problems and write code for it instead of focusing on engineer because that part of the engineering and infrastructure is taken care of by your cloud provider. The other capability that um, cloud providers and Azure predominantly are offering is machine learning capability. So these kind of services are available for you and can provide you insights and we even offer you pre-built algorithms you don't have to build yourself. And I have an example of that later on. Then you have something like edge computing, where which is key for IoT machine to machine, providing you hand bit, uh, high bandwidth and content delivery, and also could help you in uh, preventing DDoS attacks and achieve higher levels of availability. So this is kind of the capability you can use too with regards to edge computing. And then there's IoT, which you can see more and more uh, around you. IoT is getting a big momentum, and uh, cloud providers are providing office. Uh, services to help you harness the connectivity with those devices and enable to ingest that data or provide machine to machine communication, etc. So this is something a cloud can do for you and even better, even on a global scale. So what in general would be you know, benefits for, for leveraging um, a cloud platform like Azure? One of the things is, like I already said, you have to reduce DevOps. So you can, because of the electricity, you can um, scale your environment where need be and scale down where necessary. And the other thing is that you have to worry less about infrastructure because of the abstraction of servers. The other thing, which also stands out with leveraging cloud, is faster time to market. So you're able to rapidly deploy and develop your solution and by that, just focusing more on your business problem logic and be more agile in deploying this instead of worrying about infrastructure, et cetera, which was at the previous point I was making. And then you have something like the micro billing. And what I mean by that is a lot of the services are either built by the hour or by the second. And this, of course, can reduce your costs in a way that you only pay for what you use instead of having reserved instances or pay for infrastructure you're maybe not using or underutilizing. So this is some problem that you know is, is moving away from you. So these are kind of the big benefits um, leveraging the cloud. And then there's some scenarios if when you think of cloud, okay, um, how do I approach this? So one of the scenarios could be, okay, I'm going to lift and shift my current infrastructure into the cloud, leveraging the infrastructure as a service capability, so using VMs and storage, et cetera. So this could be a way to move from your traditional IT into the cloud. Another thing could be that you're still, um, you still reuse some of your existing inv investments in your infrastructure, but then also try to leverage what you can find in the cloud, and then you get more into what's called a hybrid scenario. So you're using best of both worlds. 
in a certain way. Or there's another scenario, and then you're completely migrating your solutions into the cloud and then just leveraging the cloud platform kind of only. So let's look at some of the customer cases with reflection or relational to what I've just said. So one of them is Swissery. So Swissery kind of has built up a completely serverless technology, so they're going full into the cloud. And traditionally, they're like a reinsurance company that focuses on um, selling their product, uh, products and portfolio based on large um, losses that are potentially available for normal re, uh, for insurance companies. And then they kind of reinsure some of that with Swissery. So they're kind of a leading provider in reinsurance, uh, wholesale insurance, and um, they're really now looking into differentiate themselves um, within the market of reinsurance and trying to find new business models. And for one of them is why, okay, let's leverage Azure and try to build a microservice architecture that could support um, a kind of a micro insurance type of capability, which was the flight delay. Um, capability of service they created. And this service was kind of intended for uh, people that are using um, or flying from A to B and let them insure against a delay, but also um, reduced the time it would take to file that claim or get reimbursed. So they kind of build up this capability. And they were able to do this fully automated um, in the Azure world. So. That's the DevOps part that reflects, and they're also able to build this service in a pretty short time, in eight months, leveraging several services within Azure. So this is one of the capabilities where uh, this particular company completely embraced Azure and built their services in the cloud. Then there's another um, reference case I like to point out, which reflects more into opening up um, silos of information. So in this case, we're talking about Nextport that selected Azure as their platform to find something that could save them time and also en enable technology to open up some of the resources and make it more efficient uh, to other companies that want to use this data to their um, benefit in logistic type of scenarios. So this company, Nextport, was able to open up some of the um, proprietary type of databases or the closed systems and open them up to others and able to monetize um, this capability, um, leveraging Azure. So this is another way of leveraging what you can find in the cloud using API management. And then there's Sudal. And this is kind of a more hybrid type of customer scenario. Um, Sudal is a world player um, manufacturing a, a range of products for the building industry. And they're operating in several countries and they're based in Antwerp and they kind of wanted to improve the um, order submission uh, capability towards all their customers worldwide. And for this, they still uh, had their SAP system on-prem, but they also wanted to leverage the capability of Azure reaching out to um, other um, partners and enable them to, to have a more smoother ordering process and more that it was guaranteed as well. So here they were able to have a smooth communication between SAP on-premise and Microsoft Azure. And the challenge was a little bit to really synchronize the data and were able to do this, that every change resulted in an update in other systems, even on-prem. So this is more type of a hybrid scenario where Azure and on-prem were really working well together. Okay. So I've put some reference cases out that were coded, was involved, and uh, providing some of the experience and guidance in these. And then in general, if you look um, into Azure, there's some other reference cases or use cases, not by coded, the other. This is a use case particularly built by Microsoft. This is a tool booth license plate recognition system. And this is completely a solution built in the cloud. So pictures are uploaded, they're stored, then there's some trigger mechanism in place, which is called Event Grid, which is a service triggering some compute capability, which are functions, um, storing data, but also leveraging uh, computer vision API, some of the intelligence that the cloud offers, which is kind of um, an API that does extract the license plate using optical character recognition. So the smart solution in this, and this is where AI um, is being offered in this cloud platform, Microsoft, but there are also other cloud platforms that are providing um, pre-built AI capabilities. So the computer vision um, has an OCR capability and which is used. So the image processing is being pushed by one of the compute servers towards, um, in this case, it's the photo that's photo, uh, pushed to the computer vision ADI. Now the way this works, 
is what I will show you in this, this demo. So this demo will focus on the flow of from blob storage, event grid function, and cognitive. But in general, you could envision the system like this. So you have a toll booth camera monitoring all the traffic, and all the traffic is being every car or vehicle is being photographed, and then particularly on uh, the position where you find the license plate. And these pictures are then through an IoT hub, which is a capability of connecting a device on-prem or in the real world with the cloud. Then the data is being ingested, and then you can do some analysis, or you can store the data and then later do some machine learning, but you can also push data towards a function to leverage what the cognitive service would offer. So it's just to mimic this for you, so this was something that would happen in the background. This is just a simulator which I built. It's just pushing those um, license plate pictures up there, and then just, in the end, returns what the actual license plate is. Now I will switch over to the image processing. So if you wonder, hey, what's the behavior of this particular capability in the cloud? So a lot of these uh, pre-built AI capabilities is available in Azure. But here you see one of the license plates, which I push, and then the preview is that this is the clear text. And there's also some JSON, this kind of the format is pushing it out, but I'm interested, of course, in the license plate. So this is something you can test out yourself. There's some other capabilities, um, image analysis, et cetera, but just give you a, a view of how easy you can leverage the capability in the cloud to build your solution. And there are, of course, tons of scenarios um, available how you can build your solution leveraging a modern platform like Azure. So what would our approach be? And we as Coded um, provide services around Azure, so you see them plotted right here. So we are able to do and provide uh, guidance and build solutions with regards to hybrid, so connect on-premise with the world of, of Azure, and you see some services plotted here. We even, for instance, offer a nebulous gateway, providing the ability to provide connectivity from your device into the cloud. Um, we can deal with connectivity. We can deal with some of the messaging capabilities, uh, security, administration. We kind of leverage a lot of what we find in the cloud and build up a solution using some of the services you see plotted here in the various um, kind of buckets. So if you look in general, we have kind of over five years experience building Azure solutions and um, having knowledge in that area. Besides our knowledge as an integrator um, with integration, so we have about 20 years of experience um, doing integration in general, even with regards to the cloud, but that's just more from the last five plus years. We're kind of using uh, one myth mythology with regards to um, building up our solution. We kind of leverage proven patterns, patterns we see ourselves are the patterns provided by Microsoft. We kind of agile and flexibility, so this is the way we work. And the agility, of course, is provided by a platform because we have to worry less about infrastructure. We provide guidelines and best practices. Um, we have jumped our start templates when it comes to provisioning the uh, services um, within Azure. We have our own uh, software, so for instance, that Nebulous Gateway is one of uh, an example of it. And we're also able, um, if necessary, to manage uh, the environment. So we're already doing this for some of our customers with regards to Azure, but also with regards to integration solutions. So that's kind of what we could offer. So if I want to summarize what I've just um, talked you through, is that, of course, we're, uh, we're looking at a new world. So the digital world, which is going on for quite a while, we're transforming our business slowly. Some are more faster paced, some are more slower paced. And we're kind of transforming our businesses and leveraging what some of the public cloud providers are offering. And for instance, in this case, it's Microsoft Azure. And what you could see, and I think that's pretty clear, is that with a cloud platform, and Microsoft Azure in this particular case, you can optimize for costs, performance, and agility. So costs because you only pay what you use, performance because of you leverage the electricity of what the cloud can offer, so you can scale up and scale down and the agility of using some of the capabilities, pre-built capabilities that Microsoft is offering. And that's what I tried to show you with a little small smart solution um, leveraging cognitive services that Microsoft are offering. Then there are new emerging markets. Um, if you could look at big data, if you look at IoT or serverless, and this is something that the cloud providers, the AWS and Google and Microsoft are pitching for with their services. And IoT is not just about connectivity, but also ingesting that data and doing some analytics around it, where it would be geared more towards the big data. 
uh, machine learning capabilities or other like, okay, we offer services that you only have to provision and the rest is managed by us. So you don't see any service and we also provide out of skill and we only charge what you kind of use. So in general, you could do things better, faster, and more agile with regards to um, using Microsoft Azure. And then based on the experience we have and, this, and some of the reference cases I talked about, and there are more reference cases you can find in our um, website, is that we as Coded can help you because we have built up quite an extensive amount of knowledge and know-how by building these solutions for our customers. If you want to learn more about um, Azure in general, so there's some case studies you can find on the Coded website. There's a Microsoft Azure platform website, which also provides some of the reference cases, um, and you can find those in the Azure solutions. And there are some quite some, um, I would say, uh, website, journalist websites that really focus on um, everything that happens in the cloud. So that could be InfoQ, that could be VentureBeat, TechCrunch, or ZDNet. So those are kind of uh, the more generic um, websites where you can find um, more about these type of reference cases or other reference cases or in general what happens in the cloud, not just in the Microsoft ecosphere, but also what happens with AWS, with Google, uh, with IBM, and some of the other cloud providers um, in, um, in the cloud. That's not just solely inter uh, infrastructure as a service, but also platform as a service or serverless or um, SaaS solutions. So you find a, a variety of, of news items and they're pretty up to date as well. And with this, um, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I will be now able to answer them for you.